Senator Rand Paul, I'm back here with the roundtable. Mike Needham, conservative lobbyist with Heritage Action. So here's the, the question I think we have to resolve, which is how does Hillary Clinton position herself as something other than a default establishment choice with a complicated past? And members in your own party are saying we're not going to let the past be forgotten. Well, I think it's a big challenge for her, and, and probably the biggest challenge out there is actually Obamacare. Here's somebody, if you look at the policy in Obamacare, it's more similar to what Hillary ran on in 2008 than Barack Obama. Barack Obama in the Ohio primary said it would be unfair to make people purchase something that they can't afford to purchase with regards to the individual mandate. And so I think she, like many, Repub uh, many Democrats um, coming up in the 2014 Senate races, are going to have a big trouble, trouble getting away from Obamacare, mm. which are the policies she advocated for six years ago. Whether it's impeachment, whether it's Obamacare, it's Benghazi. Mona, is that you're a veteran now of, uh, of the Obama White House. Same question. How does she position herself as a candidate of the future? Yeah, well, first, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, anybody knows exactly what her decision-making process is or what the timeline will be. Right. Um, but she clearly is in no rush. Uh, to make a decision, and frankly, why should she? She's got everything she needs to run a fantastically successful presidential campaign, star power, money, organization, institutional support. Um, and I think she's got uh, the skill set and the background that you need to be a president this time, uh, time in our nation's history, which is an ability to deal with complexity and nuance and all the trade-offs that come with being president of this country. So I actually think she's going to take her time, as she should, because it's a pretty consequential decision, and she knows that more than anybody else. You, you know, the campaign, as Jonathan was pointing out at the end of that interview, the campaign's in place. There are two PACs. They've divided the lines of authority. They've got potential uh, campaign managers lined up. She's got her book to do. She doesn't want a campaign announcement to muddy up her book tour. That's going to be a very big book next summer, right. we believe. And so at that point, after that, she doesn't need to put in place the fundraising apparatus. And as, as was reported in HRC, they have kept very close all the fundraisers, the big money people. She did, in fact, when she was at the State Department, you would see at State Department events a lot of the big money people. They have always been part of her circle. So it's never been disbanded. But the, the, the bigger question of how, not whether, but how she positions herself, EJ, is what I'm really interested in, how she runs. Well, she's got a great advantage, which is she was in the Obama administration, and if President Obama's doing pretty well at the end of 2015 or 2016, she can talk about be the candidate of continuity. She's also been out for four years, and if you need to adjust, if you want somebody really experienced, she can run that way. The thing that I am struck by when people like uh, Senator Paul raise the old Bill Clinton story um, is uh, she always had the best answer to that in 2008 which is what part of peace and prosperity didn't you like? And what it, what the countries kind of thought through Bill Clinton, and they said, yes, there is this aspect of him connected to the scandal, but there's still a lot of fondness for the prosperity. And she almost beat Barack Obama. If she had not messed up the beginning of the campaign, been overconfident and fallen behind on delegates, she won the second half of that uh, primary uh, campaign. So she is a formidable politician. What if the president is not doing well, though? then does she run away from him and does that anger the base? That's the yeah. pitfall yeah. that I, I mean, think she's got the getting. process right. She's got all the campaign staff, all the money, that, but that's really relatively unimportant in the campaign. I think she doesn't have the substance yet. She doesn't, how is she going to govern so it looks different than under Obama? How is she going to work with a Republican Congress? Secondly, what are her issues? She's got to have three big issues that don't look like Barack Obama's issues. So I don't think she has that, uh, you know, and I don't think uh, she, she really is going to be able to appeal to the left and the base of the party. I think there's like a 30, 40 percent chance that Brian Schweitzer, I think Jerry Brown would be, he's a little old, would be ideal, right personality, right state, right performance. There's going to be a challenge from the left. Right. No so one of the challenges yeah. for Hillary is that the Bill Clinton of today is not the Bill Clinton that E.J. just talked about. Bill Clinton in 2000 was the founder of the Democrat Leadership Conference. He was a moderate Democrat president. Harold Ford was the upcoming star of the Democrat Party. Today, Bill Clinton's out there doing events with Bill de Blasio, the progressive mayor of, of New York City. And so the interesting thing is over the last 10 years, through the Iraq War, through the primary challenge Joe Sestak put up to Joe Lieberman, 
through the rise and fall of Har Har Howard Dean, mm -hmm. how the Democrat Party has become so much more progressive. It's the Democratic Party, and I think that that misreads who Bill Clinton was. Bill Clinton always had a strong populist streak. It's one of the reasons why he won in 1992. He, yes, he had the correction that the Democratic Party needed. He campaigned on raising taxes for the rich in 1992. This is not yeah, a well, well, there's, there's, there's a big gap between the era of big government is over and Bill de, de Blasio saying that the horses that go around Central Park aren't... Well, let me get Mona back.